Hello everyone and welcome back. It is the beginning of March here and I'm on the southeast coast so usually it's quite a bit warmer on the south coast but today it is absolutely freezing. I think the rest of the country expected snow so it's not all bad but first I'm going to head to the shed and I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. So this is my potting shed, quick little tour and so I insulated all of this last year, put up some chipboard and then since I've been adding in loads of tool storage as you can see there and um, but yes this is my happy place and it is super warm in the winter time and a perfect place to make a cup of tea So I've got my cup of tea and I'm all ready to sow my tomatoes, which is very exciting. So as I said before, I'm on the southeast coast and it is March time. So that's about the right time of year for me. However, if you're further north, then you might want to delay sowing until sort of April time. And you can even go into May and still get a decent crop out of them. So don't rush into it. You need great light levels. So I have um, a dual aspect living room. So I've got windows both sides, which actually means that I've got a perfect amount of sunlight in there. Um, I don't have any grow lights, any heat mats or anything like this. And likewise, this greenhouse is not heated. So I'm not using anything fancy, but this method has always worked for me. So this is actually the greenhouse that I plant my tomatoes in. So early in spring, I have all my seedlings in here. Then I evict them and plant all of my tomatoes. So I'm going to show you in a minute the beds that I've got in here because I actually plant my tomatoes straight into the ground. So hopefully you can see this. So this bit here is quite a narrow bed and then it widens up and so it goes all the way back there and then it comes back on itself and this is actually a wider bed than this side. So this side I managed to fit one, two, three, four, five plants in. Then I go six, seven, eight, nine. Then I go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then also get some marigolds in here. But yeah, this just gives me a little bit of space on my paving where I can get in and out without getting muddy and yeah plenty of room for my tomatoes. So I'll be showing you a few different sowing methods today but first of all I'm going to go through all the varieties that I'm growing this year. So this here is one of my many day jobs making these personalised seed boxes and here are all my seeds inside. So I'll just grab out the tomato ones that I'm going to be growing this year. Now I'm going to apologise in advance for any pronunciations that are wrong because I tend to say things how I see them um, which normally is wrong so yes. First one is this tomato, um, it's a beefsteak one and it's called Black Russian. Um, so this one I actually grew last year and I've already sowed these seeds this year so I won't be sowing any more of these um, but yeah they're absolutely beautiful. The skins on them are really dark, um, yeah definitely recommend that one. This is a new variety for me. Uh, so this one is an F1 and it is super sauce. So on the packet it says that you can get a jar of tomato sauce per tomato. How ridiculous is that? Um, but yeah, going to be giving that one a go because I do like freezing tomatoes and making them into sauces. This one is another F1. It is a cherry tomato, but it's also um, the pear. No, is it the pear or plum? I think it's plum, plum. It's a plum shape, um, but it's cherry. And the skin just looks beautiful. I am a sucker for uh, pretty looking varieties. This one, um, I've grown this loads of times before. Um, I'm not going to even pronounce that. I think it's idle, but it's definitely not. But yeah, I've grown this one before and it is absolutely prolific. You get so many tomatoes per vine. This one is another new one for me. So this one is Rapunzel. And the picture online, it had just these gorgeous, gorgeous vines of um, tomatoes. So I'll be interested to see how that one works. This one, I'm not even going to attempt to uh, pronounce. So yeah, you can just read it there. But this one, um, it was a, a ribbed one. So it's a bit like a marmondy that I grew last year. But again, this one's a new one. So I shall see how that one gets on. 
This one is Buffalo Sun. So this is again another big beef variety, but actually this one's an orange one. So be interesting. And another orange one, but a cherry variety this time, which is Honeycomb. Haven't grown that one before. This one is another plum variety, Orange Yellow. Um, so another new one for me. The Black Tomato, I have already sown these. So this is Indigo Rose. Um, never grown these before, but yes, I am going, I've already sown these. These I've actually done in water, so I'll explain a little bit more about that later. And then this one is Gardener's Delight. Now, I grow this every year. You can't go wrong with Gardener's Delight, and actually my mum really likes growing them, so I'm going to be doing extra for her. So these are all the varieties that I'm going to be sowing today. And it is very difficult because it is, of course, personal preference on what variety to go for. Um, but I would say things like the F1. So see, it says an F1 just before the variety name. So an F1 means that they've been um, bred. So they are a hybrid of two, maybe multiple plants, and they've basically taken the best qualities from them. Um, so that's why they normally have a bumper crop um, and are quite easy to grow. So especially if you're a beginner. Um, all of these seed packets actually, a lot of them are new and the ones from Sutton's I actually got in a £1 deal so each packet was just a pound. You don't get a huge amount of seeds per packet so they're probably just going to do me a year um, but yeah, a few quid spent on seeds um, in a tomato shortage right now seems like a really good idea to me. So as I said, there's plenty of ways to sow your seeds and you just need to find a method that works best for you. So the first one is sowing seeds on damp kitchen roll. Now basically all you're going to do is grab a Tupperware box, you're going to line that with some kitchen roll and then you're going to pour a little bit of water on it. Make sure that it's just water out of the tap rather than a water butt because you don't want to introduce any bacteria. Um, and then all you do is simply sprinkle your seeds on top, pop the lid on and then you're going to put it somewhere warm. So either a windowsill or you can even put it near a radiator. So that's one method. Another method is simply just sowing them in individual pots. Um, so I've done this many times before and it works really well. The only thing is obviously you need individual pots. So again, um, the seed sowing compost you can buy is slightly more expensive. So if you don't want to go down that route, multi-purpose will be absolutely fine. And if you're worried about any of the sort of the stony bits or sort of the woody bits that you may find in the compost, you can just sieve that out. So that's one method. Another method is in a tray. So again, I have done it in a tray uh, many years ago. Um, so this tray actually comes with this little propagator cover. Um, the tray method, the only reason why I'm not that keen on it is because they're quite fiddly when you then want to pick them up and pot them on. You have to break all the soil apart um, and then you could potentially damage some of the roots. So. If you've got this method, it's absolutely fine. You've just got to be a little bit more careful when you're potting them on. Now, this comes obviously with this propagator, this little cover on top, clear cover. If you don't have anything like this, you could also just use a mushroom pot and then you can grab a bag or you can get some cling film and cover it all up because what tomatoes like is damp, humid conditions and that's going to get them germinating really quickly. So again, if you wanted to put this on a windowsill or you can put it by a radiator. Now, another method is these coir coins. Um, so these are from a coir company that I absolutely love. I'll put them in the caption below. Um, and basically these are gonna swell up. I'll show you how they work in a minute. Um, but I prefer using these because actually when you come to pop them up, you can just take the whole thing, you don't need to take them out of the shell or anything, and you just pop them into some soil. So there's zero root disturbance. Now, another reason why I love these is because what I'm going to do with this tray is I'm actually going to cover this in a big bag. So as I said, tomatoes like humidity and they like dampness. But as soon as they germinate, they don't need that humidity so much. They don't need the dampness. And actually, by having that cover on, you're going to be blocking out light. Now it sounds ridiculous, but actually just that thin piece of plastic will block out some of the light. So because these are all individual, it's so easy for when I see one to germinate, I can pick it up, pull it out and just pop it on the windowsill by itself and leave the rest to germinate. Now it's time for the magic part. Now, the biggest problem with these coir discs, as you can see, they have all expanded now. 
um, is that you can't really get a plant label into them. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing a Sharpie and I'm going to write all the varieties on here. And then when I pop them up, I shall pop a proper plant label in them. But yeah, a little bit confusing, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Now it's time to get sewing. So I've always grown my tomatoes in a greenhouse. So this greenhouse I managed to get second hand. Um, both of them have got second hand actually. Um, sometimes you have to pay like 20 quid, but it's not a lot. The main thing is you've got to actually take down the greenhouse and then assemble it again, which my family now refuse to help me with because um, yeah, it is quite an ordeal. Um, but you can grow these outside as well. So if you've got sort of a sheltered spot in your garden, maybe you've got a patio or a balcony, it's completely fine to grow them outside. There are actually varieties that are better for growing outside and it will say on the packet. So if um, you want to give it a go, but you think you've never been able to because you haven't got a greenhouse, well, you are wrong. You can definitely do it. So don't let anything pop put you off. Some of these seed packets are really hard to get into. Um, yeah, they don't make it easy, do they? Now, one of the funny things is that my husband doesn't actually like eating tomatoes. Um, so he will eat them if they're in like a sauce or like a bolognese or if they're on top of sort of um, a pizza space or something like that, but he will not eat them raw. Um, so I do grow a mixture. So I like to grow the beef varieties um, and then all I do is freeze them. Now freezing is so simple with tomatoes. You don't have to do anything with them. Um, you can just literally pop them in a bag and pop them in the freezer. Not one seed. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's really difficult to get the seeds out of this. Um, so yes, you can definitely freeze them and grow them for that use or obviously you can grow the cherry varieties and eat them fresh um i mean none of mine go to waste they all get used somewhere or another i love eating them but apart from that we don't buy tomatoes um so the one of the things that i do is i try and be as self-sufficient as possible and eat seasonally and um, so yes we have had the tomato shortage at the moment but actually a big reason of that is because we're not eating seasonally So as you can see here, I am just growing one seed per coir disc um, and I'm growing two plants of each and I'm hoping because this is new seed that they will germinate. So what I'd normally say to you is to grow double the amount of plants that you want. So that just ensures that if any don't germinate, you've still got that one back up. If you want to sow more, go ahead because actually these make great presents. Um, so one thing I do is I put a table out where I live and I just chuck all the seedlings on there. I mean, I don't chuck them, I place them nicely um, and put a sign up saying they are free for people to take. Um, yeah, it's just a nice little thing because people, I think, always want to give tomatoes a go, but maybe they're a little bit scared to start the seeds off. Um, so for me doing that for them, it gives them a better chance. Now, one other thing to consider, if you are going to be growing in pots or on your patio, then you need to be thinking about um, sort of the variety in terms of size. So you get two different types of tomatoes. You get a cordon variety or you get a bush variety. Um, so a cordon variety is where you get one single stem um, and then basically the tomatoes branch off of that one single stem. So that stem can get really tall um, and it's going to need some support. So you're going to need some bamboo canes in there or you're going to need some trellis for it to grow up against. If you wanted something that's a little bit more manageable, a little bit more easier, then I would go for a bush variety or even a semi-bush variety. And that is basically where you let it do its thing and it grows more like a bush. So there's less uh, management involved with it. Um, and obviously you don't need anywhere at all for it to be growing. And there you go, that is all the seeds sown there. So all I'm gonna do is just move the coir, literally cover the seed over like so. 
So that is my tomatoes sown for 2023. So I've got quite a few different varieties here and now I'm gonna place it into one of these bags. So this bag is just a reusable Ziploc bag, um, but actually it's gonna create a lovely warm environment for those tomatoes. So all I'm gonna do is seal this up and then put these by my radiator. And so as I said, you can just pick one out individually when they start to germinate. So as soon as you see them, you wanna be checking on them daily because some do sprout up overnight. Now, if any of these go leggy, so leggy is a term that basically it's when a seedling reaches for the sun. So this happens for two reasons. One, there's not enough sun. And two, it's because the seedling is in a very warm environment. Now for tomatoes, that's not an issue because they love being in the warm. However, if you've got cooler climate crops um, and you put them indoors, they're gonna think, oh, it's summertime. It's really warm, so I'm going to grow quickly, but actually the light levels aren't there to match it. But in this case, actually, having leggy seedlings is not a problem. And I'm going to show you in the next video, when these have grown on a little bit, how to pot them up so you can get rid of those leggy stems and actually make them into a really strong plant. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Please do like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video on how to pot on your tomato plants.